Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be covering a cloth pool product reveal. Now in this case, we just have Suzanne the monkey as the product reveal, but let me go ahead and show you guys what we're actually going to be doing today. Let me go ahead and switch over to solid view and play this back for you guys. So as you can see, we have a cloth sitting over an object. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pull that cloth over the object to reveal it. And it looks really nice. It's actually pretty simple to set this up. We'll go over all the details, the lighting, the materials, everything like that. Um, and we'll end up being able to put pretty much any object we want underneath of the cloth. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Alrighty, we are in a completely brand new Blender document. Let's go ahead and get everything set up. As you guys can see, I just have a camera and a light. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete the light source. I'm gonna add in a plane. I'm just gonna scale it up like that. And then I'm gonna add in an object to be the thing that we're going to uncover with the cloth. In this case, we're gonna use the monkey just for simplicity purposes. I'm gonna go ahead and add a subdivision modifier to that monkey and I'm gonna give it two levels. And I'm gonna go ahead and shade that smooth. I'm gonna to go to my side view and I think I'm just gonna rotate this, bring it up right above the floor plane here. And that looks pretty much perfect. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just show you guys how to set up the cloth and then we're gonna get into like how to pull the cloth, how to make it interact, etc. So the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is add in a plane. This is gonna be our cloth. If you guys want to, you can rename this to cloth up here and then I'm gonna rename everything else. Floor, cloth, camera, and then Suzanne, we can just call this um, hidden object and I'm just doing this for organization purposes another thing I'm going to do is head up over here to this little drop down click on random so that we can easily see everything in our scene all right let's go ahead and hop into how to make this a cloth the very first thing you're going to need to do is decide how big do we want this cloth to be so I'm going to go ahead to my top down view I'm going to press on z I'm going to first scale it up just a bit I'm going to head over to x-ray mode so I can see through this and then I'm gonna press S Z to scale it on the, uh, sorry, S Y to scale it on the Y axis, scale it up just a little bit more. I feel like that is pretty much the perfect cloth size. And I think I might bring it back a little bit on the Y axis. So now that we have our cloth set up, let's go ahead and tab into edit mode on this plane, right click, subdivide. And then with our little drop down, I'm just gonna choose, for now we'll do N subdivisions, 12, we'll do 12, all right, perfect. Cool, so we're gonna do 12 subdivisions on that. Save, save your project as you go. And then we're gonna go ahead and add a cloth to the plane right here. All right, so add your cloth physics property right there. Now I actually saved the physics properties from my last testing. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those up. I actually have screenshots of the exact settings that I used. Here we go. So here is the first one and here is the second one. So we have to go over two things. First, the actual cloth settings themselves. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. All right, cloth settings. We're gonna to wanna to go ahead and give ourselves quality steps of five. Speed multiplier, you can keep that at one. Vertex mass, so like how much each little vertex weighs when Blender calculates it. We're gonna go ahead and give that 0.8. Uh, you can keep the air viscosity at one. And then for tension and compression, we'll keep those at 15. Shear and bending, we'll do five and 0.5. Everything else can remain the same. We're looking good there. Now let's go ahead and check our shape settings. Now we'll go ahead and get into this in a second, but under collisions, which is on the right-hand side here, you're gonna to wanna to set self collisions to checked. So you wanna check that on. You can keep those default settings and then everything else looks good to me. We'll go ahead and get into this pin group in a second, which is what we're gonna to use to actually pull the cloth. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start testing this out. So let's actually test our simulation. But right now, if we press play, you'll see that our cloth just drops down. And that's because it has nothing to interact with. So let's go ahead and give it something to interact with. First of all, let's go ahead and click on this floor plane. Let's apply a collision modifier. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on the monkey. And we're gonna also give this a collision modifier. Now, if we press play, I'm gonna go ahead and save this by the way. If we press play, we have some interaction. So as you can see, our cloth is now interacting with both Suzanne, the monkey, and the floor plane, which is fantastic. But you can see it looks a little bit janky. Now there's a couple of reasons why it looks like this. One, it does not have a ton of subdivisions. So if we go ahead and tab into edit mode, it has a lot, but it doesn't have enough where it's gonna look like a realistic cloth. So there's a few ways that we can combat this. One, we can just add subdivisions in edit mode, or we can do what most people do, which is add a subdivision surface modifier. So you always wanna make sure that's after the cloth modifier right here. And I'm just gonna give this a level of two, 
right click shade auto smooth and you can see it already looks fantastic now you'll notice if you zoom in there's a few edges that don't look great in order to fix those tab into edit mode subdivide it one more time now we're going to go back remember every time you make a change you have to rebake your simulation now look how smooth that looks now that's great we know that we're going to get a good cloth simulation now so let's go ahead and set up some pin groups so that we can actually pull the cloth and animate that pulling action revealing the subject underneath all right so go ahead and tab into edit mode go to your corners of the cloth now pick the corners that you want to pull from in this case i want to pull from this side which is the far side on the y-axis I'm going to go ahead and highlight this edge vertex. Again, you have to go to vertex select mode up here in the top left. Highlight that vertex, control H, and you're going to get this little option for hook. Click on hook to new object. All right. You're going to see this little empty pop up. You're going to do the exact same to the other side, control H, hook to new object. And now we have two objects on both sides that are hooked to those edges. Now, there's another thing we need to do. There's this little green icon right here. Click on that. And then you see where it says vertex groups right here. Make sure that is pulled open like that. You're going to want to actually highlight both vertices using shift. So now I have them both selected and go ahead and click on this little plus sign here. And then you can just name this um, my custom group. Okay. You can name this whatever you want. Click on assign. And now those two vertices are now assigned to this vertex group. You can go ahead and tab out of edit mode now. And then we're going to go over to our cloth settings again. And then if you scroll down, if you remember before I mentioned this pin group, go ahead and click on that. And now you'll see our custom group that we just created. Go ahead and select that. Now if we play this back. We should have a pinning type of effect here. Now notice what's happening. These two edges are now pinned. So wherever we move this empty, the cloth will follow. So it's almost like you're grabbing each edge of the cloth and basically it's going to follow from there. So now here's where it gets really interesting. This is what I decided to do in my previous project. I'm actually going to control both of these empties with another empty. So let's go ahead and add in an empty. I'm going to add in a single arrow. Okay. And now you're not going to see it at first because it's right in the middle. But if you press G and then Z, you can see that it pops up right here. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it on the X axis, 90 degrees, negative 90. I'm going to scale it up so we can really, really see it. Now, you can, as you can see, we have this arrow right here. I'm going to go ahead and move it back on the Y axis. And then I'm going to go ahead and parent both of our empties to the arrow. Go ahead and click on your first empty. Click on your second one and then shift click the arrow. Control P to parent. And you're going to get your, op, your options here. Just click on object. And now if we move our arrow, you can see that our empties move with it so the way i want to do this is i want to let the cloth drop down first and then i want to pull the cloth but before we get into all that this video is sponsored by skillshare for those of you who are passionate about 3d art and animation this opportunity is for you with skillshare you can easily discover courses that will challenge your creativity and enhance your skills i've personally enjoyed several classes on skillshare to help me with my 3d art and animation modeling and sculpting have never really been my strong suits so when I found this course by Pixo3D, it was the perfect way to improve my skills. After taking this class, I felt so much more comfortable with modeling and sculpting in Blender. And do you want a full-time creative career? Because Skillshare has a class for that too. From creating an online presence to finding new leads for clients, Skillshare covers this and more. And once you finish one class, there's always more to learn. And here's the best part. Skillshare is offering one month free to you. This means you can join Skillshare with zero cost. So take this opportunity to enhance your skills and unleash your creativity. Join Skillshare using the link in the description below. The first thousand people to join will get one month free. And Skillshare, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Just imagine what you could learn in just one month. Click on the link in the description below and become a member today. So if we play this back right now, you'll notice that the cloth drops over our subject and it looks really good but we want the cloth to be pulled, right? And we have our pin group, which is fantastic. So one of the things I'm gonna do, first of all, is I'm gonna go to my side view, and I think I'm gonna highlight everything, right? The cloth, the empties, and our parent empty right here. I'm just gonna move it on the Y axis so that the cloth is a little bit more centered over our subject. I think that looks great. Just go ahead and play this back, make sure everything's looking good. Awesome, now our cloth is much more centered over our subject, and now we can actually go ahead and animate everything. So when do I wanna start animating? Well, let's go ahead and just animate this parented empty right here. So I think around frame 30, 
I'm going to go ahead and insert a keyframe, pressing the I key on my keyboard, insert a location keyframe. Then I'm going to head over to frame 40, and I'm just going to go ahead and drop this down until those empties are almost touching the floor. Insert another keyframe, and then I'm going to move forward to how about, let's say, frame 130, and I'm going to move this arrow very far back on the Y axis. Right about there should be good. And we're going to go ahead and insert another keyframe. Now, I'm going to go ahead and scale up my plane so it has enough room. I'm also going to apply the scale. And now if we play this back, we should have some movement with our cloth. Let's go ahead and take a look. And we will be baking this out. So as you can see, so as you can see, it looks a little glitchy. And I actually ran into this issue and I wanted to address it because you guys will probably run into the same issue. The issue is the order of the modifiers. And it took me a second to realize why this wasn't working. You need the hooks to be above. If you look on the right hand side here, I'm reorganizing these above the cloth. So now if we save this and we go back and we play it back one more time and I'm going to hide the subdivision surface so that it, it runs faster. Now, if we play this, this simulation, now you can see when our empties drop down, they actually grab the sides of the plane. And then when it pulls back, you can see that we have an awesome cloth reveal. And if we turn our subdivision modifier back on, let me play this part back here. Go ahead and zoom in for you guys. You might get some weird glitching, so just keep that in mind as you play back your animation. You know, you're gonna need to play it back from frame zero. This is why you usually bake your cloth physics. But as you can see, this looks fantastic. Look at that. You have a nice reveal right here. Now, another thing that I did in the previous uh, project that I worked on is I actually clicked on the subject. I went over to the collision option here and for the thickness outer, I changed it to 0 0.03. And the reason I did that is because sometimes you'll get clipping between the cloth and the object. So it just helps to have that little bit of extra area um, just for any mistakes that might happen. All right, another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our cloth, go to our modifiers. I'm gonna collapse everything else and I'm gonna add a solidify modifier to this. And what that's going to do is just give our cloth just a little bit of thickness. I think I'm going to go with a value of 0 0.005. I feel like that's pretty good. And now let's go ahead and bake this. So in order to bake the simulation with our plane selected, this is our cloth. Go to your cloth settings and you're going to see something called cache right here. Go ahead and pop that open. Now we need to decide how long we want to bake this for. In our case, we're at frame 250. I think that's perfect. Go ahead and click on bake. And when that's done, we'll go ahead and view our simulation. As you can see, it is running through it right there on the bottom. Alrighty, our bake is fully complete. Let's go ahead and check out our simulation. I'm gonna go ahead and press play. That looks fantastic. As you can see, the cloth is fully covering our subject. And if we keep pressing play here and we pull the cloth back, look at that amazing cloth reveal. And it looks so good. Now, the craziest part about this is you can go even more realistic if you want to. The more subdivisions that your plane has, of course, this also depends on your computer, the more realistic it's going to look. But this looks fantastic, guys. I'm super excited to go ahead and get into the materials and stuff like that. All right, let's go ahead and hop into lighting, materials, and camera setup. So we will be rendering this out in cycles. So I'm gonna go ahead and check to see if I'm in cycles. I am, I have my GPU enabled. Let's go ahead and go over to rendered view. Now in rendered view, you're not gonna see anything because we don't have any lighting or anything on our scene. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is head over to my world settings and I'm going to enable an environment texture here. I'm gonna go through my HDRI folder. Now in this case, I found that this HDRI right here, which is the power plant mill, um, this is available on Polyhaven. I just thought this lighting looked really nice. Let's go ahead and snap to the camera. Now, since this is for YouTube, I'm gonna go ahead and give this dimensions of 1920 by 1080, your classic HD size. That looks really good. And I'm also gonna position my camera really far away from the scene so we can get a really nice depth of field effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a value of 15, negative 15. Now it's really far away from our subject. I'm gonna go ahead and raise it up. And I'm just gonna to try to center our subject the best that I can. This looks fantastic. I'm very happy with this so far. Go ahead and click on the cloth and let's give the cloth a new material. Now, first of all, before we do that, press A, to select everything, right click, shade auto smooth, just in case something wasn't sh shaded smooth here. Go ahead and click on your cloth. Let's add a new material. I'm just gonna give this a nice metallic material with maybe like 0.3 roughness. Just make it look like a soft kind of metallic cloth, kind of like satin. 
I'm gonna go ahead and check my modifiers. Let's go ahead and check the subdivision. It's looking good. Again, if you get these ripples right here, you just need to subdivide and rebake. In my case, I might be able to get away with the modifier. In my case, I can, if I, if I bump this up to levels of three, it looks pretty good. So I, I think that's passable for now. If you guys wanna enhance that, you can go ahead and just subdivide your plane even more. Now moving forward here on the timeline, all right, so now we can start to see our monkey. So if we go to frame 94, I'm going to click on the monkey. I'm just going to give that a nice metallic shader as well with a low roughness. And I'm going to go ahead and make this look like gold. So I'm just going to give this kind of like a gold color here. Something as close as I can get to it as possible. I think that looks fantastic. Now, the floor, there's a lot we can do with. But before we get into that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom my camera in with an 85 millimeter lens. And I'm also going to give myself a steeper angle on this shot here, 71 degrees. See how, let's see how, uh, how low we can go here. I think that looks really nice there. I might even do a hundred millimeter lens. Fantastic. Maybe an 80 degree shot. Again, depending on how big your floor plane is, you might be able to get away with an even steeper shot. That looks really good. Wow, this looks really good. Okay, cool. And then go ahead and click on your camera and let's go ahead and enable depth of field. I am going to go to material preview because this is why I like to enhance the depth of field. And then I'm gonna give myself a depth of field of 0.5. And then I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the focal distance until the monkey is fully in focus here. I'm gonna zoom in so I can really see if the, if the monkey is in focus. Again, you guys can choose any subject you want. About 21 meters seems to do it. Now, if we go ahead and go back to rendered view, you'll see we have really strong depth of field here. Now, one of the things I did for the previous animation is I actually made my own tiled floor. Now, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to show you how to do it because I think it looks really nice and professional. I'm going to go ahead and add in a cube here. I'm just going to raise it up just for modeling purposes. I'm just going to scale it down on the Z axis a little bit like that. Just a little bit more. I think that looks perfect. Go ahead and apply the scale there. Add in a bevel modifier. That looks good. And I'm just gonna decrease the amount a little bit. I think that looks fantastic. And then go ahead and add an array modifier. Duplicate the array modifier. Choose the Y axis. So you're just gonna wanna choose one for the first on the X axis. And we're just gonna create an arrayed tile floor this way. In our case, I think I'm gonna choose 100 for each count. And as you can see, we have this really nice tiled floor. Go to your top down view, center that on your scene there. And then I'm going to go ahead and just lower this, go to my side view. I'm going to lower this below everything. And I'm going to lower it in a way where it's actually covering the other floor, but it still looks like it's under our subjects. I think that looks fantastic. Go ahead and snap back to your camera view. And let's go to rendered view here and let's just see what this looks like. It looks fantastic. Now we can give this a really nice material. In my case, I think black looks really good. So let's go ahead and make this black. And then let's just go ahead and lower that roughness a little bit. Looks really, really nice. And you guys can, again, make this whatever you want. This is just what I personally think looks good. Now on your camera, also go ahead and bump up this value right here, which is your pass part out. That's basically the surrounding area around your camera, just so we can really get an idea of what this is gonna look like. Again, I think I'm gonna even make this floor a little bit darker. I just think that looks really, really good. All right, cool. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is, as you can see, it doesn't really look like Suzanne is quite touching the floor. So I'm actually gonna raise the floor up just a little bit. You're gonna have to fine tune this to make it work. Let's go ahead and add some lighting in here. Now, the HDRI is already providing lighting for our scene, but I also wanna go one step further and add in some area lights here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a light source. I'm gonna add in an area light, bring it above Suzanne here. I'm gonna give it a value of 500 for now. And then I'm gonna give this a shape of rectangle. And then I'm gonna to go to solid view, zoom in on our light here, and I'm gonna stretch it on the Y axis, make it really, really long. In fact, I'm gonna make it longer than the whole plane itself. Now I'm gonna raise it up, go to rendered view. And I'm just gonna see what this looks like. Let's try a value of a thousand. Cool. S, X, two, scaled on the X axis. Bring it up and then bring it back on the X. Now look at what this is doing to our monkey. We're getting these really sharp lines here. 
And I really think that looks nice. You can see that depending on where we put it, it's going to look one way or the other. I'm also going to go back to solid view and I'm actually going to duplicate this light source on the X a couple of times. So we kind of have this array of light sources here. Perfect. Now, as you can see, we have four total light sources right here. I'm going to highlight them all, go back to my camera view, go to rendered view. I'm just going to see what they're making our scene look like. You can see the difference if we lower them or raise them up. And if we push them farther or, or down the other way of the X axis. Sorry, guys. All right. So I think that looks pretty good. Again, you guys don't have to do this. I just think it adds a little bit of an extra touch. And then any frame you go back to, it's going to have some really strong lighting. Another thing you can do to kind of enhance this is go over to your color management. And then you can just kind of bump this up to maybe high contrast. That looks pretty good. Again, this is pretty much your cloth reveal effect. I think this looks fantastic. There's a couple more things I want to go over. Uh, let's go ahead and go to a frame where there's a lot of motion. I think around frame 91. So one thing to keep in mind, your keyframes, you guys can adjust those to whatever you want. Depending on um, the speed at which the cloth moves, uh, it's going to give you a completely different effect. There's a lot of different things that are going to affect the way this actually comes out. But regardless, I'm going to go ahead and enable motion blur over here because I want this to look semi-realistic when we actually render this out. Now, in terms of light paths, go to your light path settings. I'm just going to set all these to three. Should be fine. That looks pretty good to me. You can also enable fast GI approximation if you want. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and I've went over this plenty of times before, look right here under the monkey. When I enable fast GI approximation, look at all the detail you lose when you enable that setting. It's a great setting for saving render time, but you're sacrificing quality. And I don't, you guys can't tell me that you're not because look at the difference. Look right here. When I un unenable that, look at the difference. It's a very clear difference. So in this case, I'm going to keep it checked off because I think it actually ruins the render. All right, cool. This is looking fantastic. Uh, for our sample count, let's go ahead and do 50. And denoising, we'll just do optics. That should be fine. And let's go ahead and render out a frame and see how it looks. Go ahead to render image. All right, let's go ahead and see how this comes out. Very curious. And it's actually pretty quick. Wow. Okay, that was about six seconds for that render. Now, in this case, we're going to need more samples because if you look, even with denoising enabled, uh, our more metallic areas are actually getting a lot of noise. So I think I'm going to raise my sample count up to 150. That should do it. Let's go ahead and check that out. Again, a lot of this and a lot of Blender, in honesty, is, is experimenting. Like you have to experiment with the different settings. There is no one size fits all for rendering. In our case, um, this might do it. That's pretty close. 300 is probably a safe bet. We can try for that. Another thing I actually wanted to experiment with real quick before we end this. It's darker to see how our lighting changes. Yeah. So this is exactly why I expressed the, my opinion that lighting is so important. And a lot of people will argue against that, but guys, lighting is so incredibly important. It just completely changes your render for, for good or for worse. I mean, in this case, this actually isn't terrible right here. I actually don't mind this. But for example, if we change this to an outdoor scene, let's just see how it affects the lighting. Completely different. This actually looks pretty cool. But again, if this is not what you're going for, you have to try new things. So don't be afraid to just try out different lighting scenarios. That doesn't look terrible either. Again, it really depends on what you guys are looking for. In my case, I'm kind of looking for a darker environment. This one wasn't too bad. And of course, if we go back to the original, this was the original. It also doesn't look terrible. You can also very well just not use an HDRI and instead use a hue and saturation value. If you do that, this is what that would look like. But again, now you're losing all that detail on the gold. So this is why I stress so much about using environment textures or proper lighting, because it really is going to drastically affect your render more than you even realize. So let's go ahead and try this one. That doesn't look terrible. We could probably go with that. And I'll probably render this out. I'll probably change this up a little bit before I do the completed render in the thumbnail. But guys, that's pretty much it. We go back to solid view and we play this back. You can see our cloth drops down. I'm also going to turn my subdivision off so you guys can see this. Cloth drops down and then it's pulled over. So now when you're playing this back, one last thing I wanted to mention, when you're playing this back, 
it's going to play back quite slowly if you have your subdivision enabled for the viewport. But if you don't, you can see right here, if you look in the top left, I'm getting about 24 frames a second. Now, depending on when you compile your frames, what frame rate you choose, this is about how it will actually play back. So this is actually like playing back almost in real time, especially since we baked our simulation. This looks really good. So that's that's how it's actually gonna look. Now you can you can look at this in rendered view, but it's gonna look pretty crappy because you don't have your subdivision enabled. This looks really good, especially like right here where everything is fully covered and then the cloth reveals it. I think it just looks fantastic. And you guys can fine tune this to however you like. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and I hope you're able to use any object you want. Again, you just have to have the collision modifier enabled. Sorry, collision physics has to be enabled on the object that the cloth is falling over. And I highly suggest that you copy my exact settings from my cloth because if you don't, you might not achieve the same result. There's literally so many little settings in there that you can adjust to get the proper result. Um, in my case, I just thought this looked fantastic, so this is what I'm going with. And you can tell as I go frame by frame how detailed it is once you add that subdivision modifier. All right, guys, that wraps up the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you can drop them down below. Consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. And thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. I will see you guys in the next tutorial.